Today on Discover Wisconsin, it's a tasty trek through the state where we're sampling some farm-said made dairy products. Hello and welcome to Discover Wisconsin. This is an anthem For those who look for more And never say they've seen it all This episode of Discover Wisconsin, America's Dairyland is brought to you by the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board. America's Dairyland is my land. Hi everyone, I'm Marie Justice, the newest member of the Discover Wisconsin team. And I am super excited to be hosting this show because I get to learn about a number of our state's signature products, like cheese, butter, and ice cream. And one thing's for sure, it all starts on the farm with fresh, quality milk. Let's get started, guys. Come on. Located on Highway 97, just north of Marshfield, sits Sea Hafer Acres. This third generation, 270 cow dairy farm also bottles some of the milk from its herd of dairy cows in its small farmstead creamery. So, how neat that your milk is bottled right here on the farm? Well, every Wednesday morning, we go ahead and we take our tanker truck and it goes over to the farm about 500 feet or so and it brings over anywhere from 1,700 to 2,000 pounds every Wednesday, which is then bottled into skim, 2% whole and chocolate milk. As the tanker truck then brings the milk over, it is then dumped into holding tanks, which are those bigger tanks pictured back there. So after that, it's then homogenized and pasteurized. The milk then is brought down the pipeline, if you can see the pipes up through there, brought through the pipeline, and then it comes over to where the round pieces are here by this table. Mm -hmm. And then each one of those jetters will then fill gallons and half gallon containers where they're then capped and put into these containers. You mentioned that you make chocolate milk. How do you do that? So the chocolate cocoa mix actually has to get added in and blended into there. We also add some sugar into there as well. We make enough milk to support our store right here, which you're standing in. And then we also sell around locally to the local convenience stores, Festival Foods, which is a local grocery store, and the Lynn Dairy Store. Yeah, that's great. Well, we are looking forward to seeing more of the fun. Wonderful. I'm so glad you guys came. In 2015, the Seahafer family opened their milk bottling plant and creamery store to showcase the fresh, quality milk that comes from their herd of dairy cows. Well, it was my husband's dream to bottle our own milk. We have high quality milk. We've been given some certification of that by the state of Wisconsin. He's very proud of this farm and what we've done here. More than simply a creamery store, the Sea Havers want to offer their patrons an experience while visiting their farmstead creamery. Well, it makes me very proud. It's, it's good to give back to the community in some ways. You know, we do offer different activities here at the farm. We do um, corn maze in the fall and wagon rides in the summer and the fall, and we do sleigh rides in the winter. Did I hear a wagon ride? That sounds like a great excursion for the girls and me. So we hop aboard and Ken, who manages the dairy herd, shows us around the farm that was started by his grandparents in the early 1900s. Okay, here we have um, our milking herd of 270 cows in here. Uh, as you notice, the sprinklers feel pretty good today. They run uh, three minutes about every 15 minutes. And with the fans going and they lay on sand, uh, it's a pretty nice environment for them on such a hot day. But I've never seen the necklace around them. Oh, What's good question. For? Yeah, that's a monitor. That's a monitor, so we know 24-7 what that animal's doing. It's fed into our computer. So if there's any hiccups or issues, there's red flags, we check the computer, we'll go check that cow, and see what's going on. Not only is the farm scenic and the wagon ride relaxing, it's also a great teaching moment for the kids. Look at, all the, look at the milking station back there, Mom. Oh, that's where we were, the milking parlor. See all that? Cool. Oh, they're, they're laying down. The wagon ride takes a small jaunt around the Sea Havers property. The creamery also features a drive through window where people can grab some farm fresh products without even leaving their car. Thank you for coming, I enjoy doing this and this is why we do it. I enjoy telling our story of, of my life on the farm. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank you. you bet. 
Although wagon rides are not available all the time, you can still find something interesting to see on the farm, like the milking parlor or some of the other farm animals. We offer an environment here where they can come out and enjoy the farm. We have a petting zoo that at different times has different animals in it, but they can look around, they can see the cows, they can uh, walk the grounds and uh, just enjoy being out in the country. We certainly enjoyed our time exploring Seahafer Acres and the Seahafer Farm Creamery. If you're looking for a fun day trip, consider heading to Marshfield for a visit. For directions and a map, log on to Discover Wisconsin and download an itinerary. Stay tuned because there are more farm adventures to come. Welcome back to America's Dairyland, where we're learning about products that are farmstead made. All right, guys, so we just learned about bottling milk. What else can you make with milk? Cheese! That's right, let's go learn how to make cheese. Our next stop, Holland's Family Cheese in Thorpe, where we had the opportunity to learn how to make cheese from award-winning cheesemaker Marika Penterman, who emigrated from the Netherlands in 2002. Can you tell us about the cheese making process? So what you see over here is our creamery. So you will see our cheese fat that we get from the Netherlands. Uh, we are a true farmstead creamery. That means that our milk that we use for our Gouda cheese comes straight from the cows through a pipeline under the ground into our cheese fat. So uh, cheese makers use cultures to help control the process of cheese making. If you want to make a Swiss cheese, you add cultures to it that will help you develop gas. Uh, holes in the cheese. Oh, that's so. where you get the holes from yeah, the Swiss cheese? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, and then when the temperature is right, then we add our rennet to it. Rennet is like an enzyme that helps the milk coagulate. So it, it sets the milk. Uh, it makes the milk firm up. So then you start cutting, and what happens is that you have a solid and a liquid part. The liquid part is the whey, and the solid part is the curd. So you probably guys have seen the Gouda cheese that is in a round wheel shape in the stores. Um, the reason, does anybody know why, why it's round? Why the Gouda wheels are round? Well, in the earlier days when they would transport the cheese from one harbor to the other harbor, instead of walking down the pine plank every time with cheese, they would just roll down the cheese. Really? So that's because of transportation uh, purposes, that's why the Gouda has a round wheel shape. In 2016, Holland's Family Cheese celebrated 10 years of crafting farmstead Gouda cheese and carefully aging each wheel on Dutch pine planks, as is traditionally done in the Netherlands. I'm very proud that, that we were able uh, to show or let people taste the, the cheeses that we produce in our, in our home country. Learning about the cheese making process is really interesting, especially to hear Marika tell it. Now it's time for the girls and me to see the cows that produce all the milk for the cheese. Rolf Penterman, Marika's husband, takes care of the animals on the farm and gave us a tour of the freestall barn. We even saw a calf being born. Is that the umbilical cord hanging? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it really? Yeah. When does it fall off? About a week, sometimes, sometimes faster. Mostly we put a clip on and then oh, yeah. we put some iodine on and then uh, then dries up mostly in a couple That's days. Awesome. It's, yeah. See, that one is from last night. See how, how fast it shrinks oh, already? Yeah. You put a little clip on so you ensure that, it, that it, you close it off. That's why it's really important to keep cows comfortable. Can we go inside the yeah, sure. and yeah. look at the, the cows in there? Yeah. We had a great time learning about the cows from the Pentermans. Our tour even included a trip to the learning center where the girls try their hand at milking a cow. There's even a jumping pad for kids to play on between tour events. And you can even take a selfie with a big cow. Cheese! Speaking of cheese, after touring the farm, we worked up an appetite. Luckily, we didn't have to go far to find great food. We just headed to Cafe Dutch's, which is attached to the Penterman's cheese shop and has some fresh fried cheese curds. Mmm, delicious. Holland's Family Cheese in Thorpe is a great place to take the family. You can learn, eat, and buy some award-winning farmstead made Gouda to take home with you. Want to plan your own trip to Holland's Family Cheese? Then log on to discoverwisconsin.com and download an itinerary. Coming up, we're getting all buttered up at our next location. Stay tuned. Welcome back to America's Dairyland, Farmstead Made. All right, ladies, so we saw milk being bottled. We learned how they make cheese using milk. What else can we make using milk? Butter! All right, let's do it. Nestled in the southwest corner of the state in Westby is Nordic Creamery, 
where Al and Sarah Beckham and their staff have been making artisan farmstead butter and cheese in the creamery they built just over a decade ago. All right, so look at all of this beautiful butter. Can you tell us a little bit about the process and how you make it? We have our fresh cream, pasteurized cream, that we uh, put in that churn. We'll spin that around and churn it until the butter separates from the buttermilk. We'll drain off the buttermilk and then we'll add salt to it, mix it in until we get the right consistency and the right feel of that butter and the right look, and, and then we take it out and we package it. What are the different flavors that we can expect from you? So today we're doing uh, a cultured butter, of course, but uh, this time of year we make a lot of our, our summer butter with cows are out in pasture, so it's, uh, they're eating the grass and it comes through in the flavor and in the look of the butter, the butter will be a real bright yellow during the summertime. Then we also do um, a garlic and basil, cinnamon sugar, maple syrup. Uh, red pepper butter, and then every now and then we'll sneak in a few other flavors just to try them out and see what we think of them. While Al Beckham also makes cheese, he's well known for his small batch butters. So before we head out to meet the cows that supply the milk, we sampled a few of Nordic Creamery's artisan butters, like garlic basil, cultured European butter, and even chocolate butter. After that tasty little treat, we headed to the back pasture to check out the Beckham's herd of dairy cows. So here we are out on the pasture where your cows get to graze. Can you tell us why you guys chose to have your cows grazing? Well, it's just, a, it's an awesome lifestyle to ha be able to have pasture raised animals that get to eat the grass. It's just, it's just what we feel is the best. Great, so they get to stay out here all day long? All day long, yep. They just come in the barn for milking time. And how often are they milked? Twice a day. Once in the morning, once at night. Neat. And how many cows do you have in this one herd here? About 40 cows always, yeah. Okay, and then what kind of cows do you have in this particular herd? Oh, we've got a whole bunch of different cows. We really don't discriminate. We've got Holsteins and Jerseys and Guernseys, a couple Swiss, and then we're breeding to Norwegian Red, too, so we have quite a variety. Is there a preference on the breed, or does one produce more milk than the other? Well, um, Holsteins produce a little more milk, and then um, Jerseys produce more um, butter fat and protein in their milk, so I think our combination of the mixed herd ends up making a really nice, um, rich product. What made you want to start a creamery? So I married a cheesemaker, and then I'm the dairy girl, so when you put us two together, you end up with a farmstead creamery. So we had the farmstead creamery, and we went back to our roots and started milking cows again, and so here we are. We've had the creamery for the past 10 years. How does using milk from grass-fed cows make better butter? The grass-based um, diet has a lot more omega, omega-3s in it, and then it makes really great butter and cheese as well. And I heard a rumor you guys do ice cream too. Yes, we do some ice cream too in the summertime. <laughs> With some pretty neat flavors. Yeah, we have a bunch of fun flavors like hot pepper chocolate and your standard favorites as well. Cool, how neat. Making a stop at this scenic little creamery was definitely a treat for the girls and me. And we enjoyed learning all about the process of making butter. Head to our website to find out how you can get your hands on some of these farmstead made goodies. Up next, I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream, especially when it's farmstead made. Welcome back to America's Dairyland, where we're discovering some of Wisconsin's farmstead made dairy products. This is our last stop, girls, and I think it's time for a treat. How about some ice cream? Yeah! yeah. All right, let's get some. Just south of Fond du Lac in the small town of Eden sits the Kelly family farmstead that has been part of the Kelly family since 1861. Here, Karen and Tim Kelly and their children create premium farmstead ice cream, as well as operate their 200-acre dairy farm. Just wanted to show you what cows eat, and uh, this is alfalfa. This is the green fields that everybody drives by, doesn't know what it is, this is called alfalfa. We'll cut that alfalfa and let it sit for one day in the sun. And what we do is let it dry, and then we'll chop it and put it in a bag. This is fermented. It was in a bag and it's fermented. Now you smell that and see what, what you think it smells like. It's got a really strong smell. So you just put that in the bag and then it turns into this? Right. Nothing else is added to it? Nope. Wow. If we cut that same alfalfa, let it sit in the sun for three or four days and let it dry, take that and see what the difference is between that and the haylage. Oh, this is really dry. And again, this is just the alfalfa sitting in the sun drying out, and it becomes 
the straw-like substance. Yeah. It's almost like hay. Do you take hay. the leaves okay. off of it and just use the stems? No, or? all the leaves are in there. If you, okay. if you really look, you'll see all the leaves. Oh, yeah. All right here, remember all the leaves, but they're just dried up. The first one that you showed us, the cows eat, right? right. They eat this one they also. Eat this one as well, okay. Now, do you feed these to certain cows or do all the cows eat this? Uh, it depends on what a ration calls for. An ration is what a cow can eat, what a cow should eat to produce milk. So we, we have a nutritionist, he decides how much of each of these feeds to feed the cow. Now that we know what the small herd of 65 dairy cows eat, it's time to visit them. Clark, let me ask you a question. Is the milk from all of these cows used to produce your ice cream? Yes, our ice cream shop takes what they need for milk and the rest is shipped to Sartori Cheese in Plymouth. Great. After visiting the cows, we headed to the creamery to see how the Kellys churn their quality milk into award-winning ice cream. It smells so good in here. What do you have going on? Well, right now we're going to make some ice cream and this is my favorite flavor. This is uh, the one I designed myself called Karen's Crazy Cake. It's a yellow cake batter ice cream with our homemade yellow cake and our homemade buttercream frosting and then with rainbow sprinkles. Oh, that sounds delicious. So what are they doing right now? They're mixing in the... the yeah, as the ice cream comes out of the machine, um, they'll be adding in the cake pieces and the sprinkles and then they're going to be putting a swirl of buttercream frosting. Wow, is that one of your most popular flavors? Yeah, it always was a flavor that we've had since we started and it's been very popular and it's also one that we won at the World Dairy Expo. Oh, how cool. What made you want to start uh, an ice cream shop? I think um, the reason I wanted to is because we already produce a quality milk on the farm and ice cream is a happy food and it's a food that brings families together. We do all make our own ice cream here for the milk from our dairy farm, but then we also have a commercial kitchen so we make all the brownies and cakes and frostings and all of our ice cream cookie sandwiches are made homemade along with our homemade drumsticks and our ice cream bars. What's the craziest flavor you've ever made? I think some of the crazy ones that we've made is maple bacon, or we use blue cheese pear, which we take pears and caramelize them in a pear flavored ice cream. And then we also put in um, gar gargonzola blue cheese crumbles, which are from Sartori Cheese, where we ship the rest of our milk that doesn't get used for ice cream. Nice. So lots of crazy ones. Crazy flavors and cool names. <laughs> yes. <laughs> At this family-owned creamery out in the country, they really know how to serve it up right. Karen frequently takes time to visit with her guests. And after receiving national recognition and numerous awards, the Kellys proudly proclaim, it's the best ice cream in the middle of nowhere. Why not take a little drive and visit one of these fantastic farmstead creameries? You'll appreciate the hard work and dedication these families put into the foods they're crafting for you. Wow, I never realized how many farmers produce fresh dairy products using milk from their own cows. Did you guys enjoy our farm visits? Mm -hmm. And I hope you did too. Thanks for watching everyone, I'm Marie Justice, and tune in again next week as we continue to Discover Wisconsin. This episode of Discover Wisconsin, America's Dairyland, is brought to you by the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board. America's Dairyland is my land. For more information, behind the scenes pics, and past episodes, head to discoverwisconsin.com. Continue the adventure by following us on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Discover Wisconsin Radio.